The refugee crisis in Ukraine getting worse. There's unimaginable suffering happening right now as Russia pummels residential areas. The U.N. says 1.2 million Ukrainians have fled the country and another 800,000 have been displaced. That includes over a half million children. As you know, my mother-in-law is one of the lucky ones. She just made her escape from Ukraine, arriving in Poland yesterday, reuniting with her daughter, my wife, Elena. Uh, I have to warn you, though, this video has been known to cause a run on tissues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What was it like waiting? I'm sorry? What was it like waiting? Oh my God, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. But I'm so happy to have her back. Oh, it's so hard. 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 Turn it off, she says. That was Harrigan. <laughs> it's amazing. They were still wearing their masks. Yeah. You drive across a war-torn country for two days. I think you could probably take off your mask. <laughs> but this was possible thanks to my incredible colleagues here at Fox, Steve Harrigan, who you heard there interviewing my wife, Trey Yingston, Scott Wilder. Uh, so she was fortunate enough to make it to safety, but there are still millions in danger. We don't know what to do. That's why we cross... Uh to uh, another country. My colleague was shot by Russian soldiers in, uh, when she tried to go out of Kiev to Zhytomyr and, it, and she was shot. She's dead now. I'm a mother. I just want to protect my son. I'm feeling a lot of pain, a lot of pain for my country and my people. Who did you leave behind? <laughs> oh. But in uh, the face of evil, there's still good in the world and heroes everywhere, like the people on the ground risking their own lives to lead others to safety and others who are doing what they can to help out. Charities like Project Dynamo uh, is rescuing people in the middle of this fighting and getting them out of the country. Private companies are also stepping up. For example, Uber is offering free rides between the Poland and Ukraine border. Although, Jesse, they won't drive you because of your one-star rating. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tipping. Oh, that's good. That's good. I think I've done my job. Good for you. Jesse, I think I've done my job. Who are you going to rescue? <laughs> Myself. Yes. <laughs> wow, Greg, that was great. And we used a Fox News alert for that. I, I, didn't, I didn't think that was possible. Yes. Um, but that was a great video, and, and we're all really happy for you and your entire family. And I think you should um, throw a party for everybody when they get back to the United States. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and, you know, listen, I, I want to make a joke, but I don't think it's appropriate, so I won't. But it was great to see that and great to see your wife so happy. You know, she's not always a happy person living with you. <laughs> I'm glad you can finally make her happy. You know, that is so, you know, that's closer to the truth than you might expect. Yeah. So, you know, but Judge, I feel guilty. I mean, I feel guilty because th that's just one person. Right. I mean, we know that there are people with their grandmothers and what, what can they do and what should, how do they, what do they do? I mean, I, Project Dynamo is one, uh, one group I was in contact with, but they were, and they had gone to Afghanistan before and gotten people out. Well, there are so many organizations. I mean, whether it's Project Dynamo or even Bethany Frankel has an organization. Look, people want to help. People are essentially good and charitable, but you shouldn't feel guilty at all. I mean, the truth is that you were able to help in, in, in one way. But I think that, that this is an example of the hard choices that people are making. Every one of those oh. people that we've seen has been separated from a loved one. The women from their husbands or their brothers or their fathers, or, you know, and, and the men from their children and their wives. And it is, it is so devastating to think that this thug in Russia is doing nothing but destroying the lives of innocent people who have done nothing. 
And, you know, whether it's people going there with meals like this Chef Andres or, or you know, just sending money to non-government organizations to do good things. I mean, we bleed for people. And I think that the more this goes on, and as Macron said, the worse it's going to get, I think the more Americans are going to start to say, you know, let's do something. We've got to do something. But where are these people going? We've got a million point two refugees going all over Europe now. Where's the U.N.? Are they setting up? Are they taking care of these? people what, what housing do we have what about the orphanages you yeah. know where are these kids going what do you think Martha I, I think it's an extraordinary story your mother-in-law was in Ukraine and had she come from Russia or was she living in Ukraine sure you know her uh, her husband passed away from COVID uh, like last year so mm. she'd been spending time and she's born in Ukraine she's a Ukrainian Russian so she was with her her cousins or whatnot in this little tiny village oh. when all of this stuff happened so uh, and then we had so we had to get her out of there and get her back, you know, and thanks to Fox. I mean, you know. Well, it really makes you, you know, going through what you've gone through. It yeah. makes you so sympathetic to what all of these people are going through. And I, that one woman who starts to cry at the end of that video <sighs> that we just played, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she said after that that she had left her husband. Mm -hmm. um, when they said, what did you leave behind? Um, oh. Because... The husbands are not allowed to leave if they're age 18 to 60. Right. So they're all staying behind to fight. And the more we learn about how long this could go on, I asked John Kirby what, those, what the Pentagon thinks. And he said, you know, weeks or months. But I think that may be overly optimistic. I think this is potentially years yeah. um, in terms of an insurgency and how long this could go on. Those fathers could be separated from their children for years, potentially. Right. Yeah. And think about also, you know, there are people in Russia, these are their relatives yeah. too. And so, right. I mean, there are people in Russia who have loved ones that they're not going to see anymore. Absolutely. Because they're going to bifurcate that. No one's going to be able to cross. And all because Putin said they were one one country. <laughs> yeah. And he's going right? to He's like, we're all, you're all Russian. This is all Ukraine's part of Russia. So we should all be together as if he was doing some altruistic thing. Yeah. To bring the country back together for his egomaniacal dream of a Russian empire that they don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, women are saying goodbye to their husbands possibly forever. I mean, they may never be reunited if oh. they're killed in this war that they're fighting. But, you know, thank God for Fox. They, mm -hmm. during the Afghanistan withdrawal, they were helping to get interpreters mm -hmm. and people who the State Department and the federal government left behind out of there as much as they could. Great that they were able to, able to help with this situation as well. You know, Ukraine is a country of 44 million people. There's already 1.2 million who have crossed the border into Poland. Poland has also been an amazing neighbor yeah. in all of this. They have welcomed them with open arms. And there are a number of international but also U.S. organizations that are providing food and humanitarian aid. And that's just going to get worse because a week ago, people were saying in Kiev and all these other cities that they had three days' worth of food. And they may be in an orphanage where there are dozens of hundreds of kids who need to be fed. Well, we're a week out from that. And when society breaks down very quickly and people can't get basic things like food and water. So this humanitarian, these humanitarian paths that they're trying to make up with the Russians, Putin hasn't shown that he's actually doing that. We heard that there was some kind of agreement, but we haven't seen really any movement on setting up that, that flow of humanitarian aid. So we'll just have to see... Um, what happens. But it's amazing always how quickly things change. Uh, you know, people having to leave and make the decision overnight whether to leave their families. My husband was telling me a story today about their organization who's helping to get people out as well. And a man who's 59 years old came to the border with six kids and oh. dropped them all off and had to go back. And so, you know, there's millions of these same kind of stories. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm very, very lucky to be working here, that's for sure. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.